hello guys good morning it's me again and thank you for visiting my channel today i wanted to talk about things i've learned as injured worker in canada today i just wanted to give you things to be aware when you work here especially working in oil field industry in canada and again first disclaimer this is only my honest experience my personal experience my own experience i'm not saying that everybody are experiencing this way i am just telling you uh, my personal experience here while working in oil field industry in alberta canada the first thing that is very common to be aware is lifting heavy pipes guys like this is very common like every site even in the shop this is very common to me that when we are lifting this really heavy pipes uh, that we use in oil field um, they just suddenly drop the pipe and this is the most common experience that I encounter and you have to make sure that um, when you are uh, in this uh, type of job you make sure that you are in the back uh, area because this is always uh, I experienced guys that um, we are lifting the pipe and then they just suddenly drop the pipe to you and this is very dangerous i experience this in every site i work so you have to make sure that you are always in the back while walking and lifting the this heavy pipe second is um, declared you as a supervisor without you knowing like to me in my experience before my accident I was told by a supervisor that I am a supervisor and I said I, I even said I even said a joke to him a supervisor to myself things like that like they don't even allow me to drive a truck how come they how come that I am a supervisor so make sure guys that you are always updated you have to know if your employer declared you as a supervisor without you knowing because this is what my experience they declared me as a supervisor before my accident next is uh, gathering teas or wellheads connection underneath a crane guys this is very dangerous guys like in my experience um, my, su my supervisor told me um, move those teas uh, to that location and uh, my response to him can we use bobcat because there we have a bobcat with a bucket so my point only is I can just put the the teas and wheelheads to the buckets and then drive the bobcat to the other side of the the side of the site so and he said no uh, you have to carry those uh, con t connections and wheel heads and these are really really heavy guys to be honest and um, yeah he wanted me to carry these teas and and uh, also wheel heads to the other side of the site with all this high pressure line this is really dangerous guys and this is one of my experience and you have to be aware that people are doing this in and in the work site so be aware that these people are doing this way I don't know what are what are their purpose but these are the one of the dangerous things that I experienced in uh, working in an oil oil field industry next is your supervisor will ask you to sit in the manifold with high pressure like 
10 to 15,000 psi pressure guys and that's very very dangerous like um i said why should i sit there like manifolds if if you can imagine we are fracking and then this uh, pressure goes to the manifold and divide it to different different location and um the pressure was really really strong and pipes are shaking and uh, my supervisor asking me to sit in that manifold and that's really crazy like it's really really dangerous at first i did not follow him i just watched because he said you have to make sure the the gauge maintain at this pressure you have to you have to radio me things like that but the things that i i was not agreeing with this like why should i why should i sit in that manifold like it's shaking like crazy if one of them snap or disconnected that will be your end and that's very dangerous and this is one of my experience dangerous experience there that supervisor is asking you to sit on a high pressured manifold next guys is uh loosened connection from compressor like in my other job like um when we clear out ice from the pipe or what do we call this uh, lay flat we have to connect this lay flat to this big compressor and this this is one of the thing that i encounter guys that um, sometimes connection is very loose so what i always uh, do at first when i start my work i have to make sure every connection are safe safely connected because it, it i have an experience that when i about to connect the the line the, the connection was very loose and that's very very dangerous guys we're talking about 10 to 15 thousand psi there and if that's going to disconnect and hit you that's going to cut your body into half next is uh run over you guys like like to me i work at night shift i was fueling the the pumps uh, that's my duty at that time and it's night shift so i have to fuel the pump and then when i am uh, when i am about to ride my truck they they suddenly like wanted to run over me guys and that's one of the dangerous experience that i experienced in the field that you have to make sure that you are always safe because others i don't know i feel that they are intentionally doing this to hurt you and to kill you next is um overloading trailer with pipes guys like this is one of the dangerous experience that i experienced there like um, at that time we are loading pipes um, i was lucky at that time because the pipes that we use is the aluminum type of pipes so there is two supervisor uh, standing at the at the trailer and we have to toss the pipes to the trailer manually so yeah in my experience they overload like it's fully load already guys the trailer was fully load but they're still asking uh, more 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 things like that and then yeah suddenly those pipes just dropped us one by one 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 of it hit me at the side it felt so painful but i was lucky at that time that um, i was not injured at that time and this is one of the dangerous ex that i experienced in in the field so you make sure guys you make sure you always make sure that when the trailer is full stop giving these people another pipes because they keep asking pipes and then suddenly those 
five slides and then drop to you things like that and uh, the things that really hit me so bad is when we are um, we called it uh, pegging we have to clear out the the snow uh, from the pipe with a compressor and then at that time I, uh, I was the one uh, holding the radio and uh, my command is uh, run low because we are I am already in a very dangerous situation but I always did when I when when I'm I am near to the pipe I ask the operator to run low and then when we are in a safe side like when we we come back to the road things like that we are far away from the pipe that's the time that i will ask for to run it uh high but uh, yeah unfortunately i know they they run the compressor high and that's that's very unfortunate to me the it, it shake a lot and the pressure and then struck me and I was passed out and yeah that was a terrible experience uh, in my life and uh, this is one of the experience that I uh, never expect in my life and uh, yeah it's very unfortunate but uh, I, I cannot do anything about this like I was trying to be safe all the time but other people are always finding ways to hurt you there and yeah yeah this this is the reason why i am sharing my experience for you to be aware that these are the reality when you work in an oil field industry in alberta so actually when i got hit and then i gained my consciousness at first i wanted to stand and then i can't feel both of my my legs and then like and then suddenly i felt so much pain and then i shouted i i got hit something like i called i called help and then my supervisor actually um said that uh okay i will call the ambulance things like that and then the things that really surprised me is my consultant like my consultant told the uh, told my supervisor that uh, no don't call ambulance put him in the truck that was his command that, that's that's really surprising guys because every day before we start our work we have the we have this meeting we call safety meeting and we are provided with telephone numbers, instructions what to do, and what are the things to do when things accidents happen. You have to call the police if there are some some kind of issue. You have to call ambulance if someone get hurt. But in that situation that I am already in a situation that I needed help, the consultant said to my supervisor, to not call an ambulance instead putting me in the truck and i said to my supervisor no it's terribly painful i can't i can't ride the truck and then what they did is they called the ambulance oh no sorry they called the medics truck so the medic truck is the one carry me like we travel almost three hours and yeah the pain is like my head is like going to explode because of the pain and um, i don't understand why the medics also did not provide me any first aid uh, medication for pain like uh, what he did only is he opened only the the window and that time is negative 25 degrees celsius that's terribly cold also like i felt so cold and so much pain like i felt like i'm going to die at that time and yeah and that's one of the crazy experience that i encounter uh, during my accident 
and uh, yeah I mean I had a uh, surgery the next day I had to surgery both of my legs and um, after that my employer came to me he said that no, you have to, you don't have to worry we are here to we are here to help you and I was so glad I was so happy that they are there to help me and yeah like that's one of the thing that uh, that's one of my mistake I I just trust them I just thought that they are really there to help me but everything was just opposite of everything that I hear guys like at first like the next day they said what they're going to do is to they have to pay uh, they will apply they will like here in in Canada if you get hurt there is this worker compensation things also like in, back home in my country we have this we call this easy employment employment compensation and we have also this called um, uh, social security system both of them you can avail both of them uh, you can apply for employment compensation and also you can apply disability benefits from your social um, security system uh, membership but that's one of the things that uh, in comparable to Canada guys this is one of the question I ask from these uh, people because in Canada there are perfect law but law here is changeable to be honest guys it's depend on the people who are um, influence influencing enough to even law can be changed like like if you get in, injured uh, workers compensation will take care of you and provide you with the things that you need so my employer told me that uh, um, what he will do is they have to pay WCB and then WCB pay me so that's what their suggestion to me and they said that's good for you that's good that's good for us so to me I cannot say anything and then yeah after 10 days occupational therapist told me oh, we have to let you go you have to come home and then yeah that's one of the first that I experienced that uh, you have to come home and we cannot provide you this uh, this we call dots uh, transportation for disabled people I have two fractured leg and he said that um, your employer suggested to provide a truck for you to ride back home and I said no I cannot do that uh, and I really insist that one of the things guys that from the very first uh, day when they asked me to come home uh, yeah this is one of the things that my uh, occupational told me that they have no I have no transportation to use as uh, you know in my situation so I said no I will I need this transportation because uh, this kind of uh, transportation you have the leaf and you can ride it with your wheelchair and you are secured inside the truck and yeah that's what I insist and then fortunately they provide the truck to come home and yes next is like when when I arrive at home, the next day, uh, some of my employer came and uh, is giving me some instruction that this is what we are going to do. We will ask you to do this type of work, things like that. And yeah, like to me, I just can't believe that I am suffering so much with pain, terrible pain and also taking high dosage of medication like I feel like I am so drug like I was injected with uh, steroids things like that and also taking 500 milligram four times a day 
my head is like so messed up and it's just terrible experience and these people are asking me to start working right away and and also at that time WCB phoned me that instructed me this is what you are going to do I complain again I said what I am in a situation a terrible situation but the response to me what are you gonna do you just gonna sit there doing nothing this you have to do this for you to receive your income that's what they told me and I have no choice I really have to follow them and what I did is like I am I am putting my both casted legs to the chair and I have to put the computer to my lap and I have to type and like I, they're asking me three hours work typing I have to do this for me to get compensation but when the when I received my first uh, compensation they only uh, uh, gave me $300 bi-weekly so that's one of the issue that I encounter and I complain why why is it like this like if we base if, if by law uh, in computation you're supposed to get 90% of your annual income like to me um, based on my uh, daily rate I am supposed to be getting 90 uh, 90,000 annually 90 percent is 81,000 you divide it to 12 so I supposed to be getting uh, 6,750 per month so yeah that's one of my uh, concern at very first why are they giving me just 300 and i will be getting 600 per month so what i did i found the agency that uh, referred me to this job i call also my employer who accepted me to the job that hey sir uh, why are they paying me just 600 how can i survive at this amount so they changed they provide me an income not really it's way way far like 2000 bi-weekly that's that's the amount that they provided to me in su supposed to be 6700 monthly so i supposed to be getting 3000 more um bi-weekly but i cannot do anything so yeah that's 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 the thing that you have to know that these people are just stabbing your back guys they're not there to help you so you make sure that uh, you get a trusted trusted lawyer to support you or people honest people who are there to support you because this is one of additional things that added my suffering really like i am physically hurt and now everything financially hurt emotionally hurt mentally hurt because of the things that i experience and uh yeah like the things also when i requested uh, equipment like they provided me uh this uh very old welcher at first and yeah it won't even run in a carpeted uh, carpeted area at my house so i complain that i receive a very old uh, wheelchair and then they replace the same thing very old and if we really purchase a brand new wheelchair that's only cost you 500 but they provided me a very old wheelchair with the uh, charge amount under my name with two thousand dollars and that's one of my question again why are these people are doing this to me 
providing me a recycled materials with four times higher with the brand new price so i complain that nobody care so i cannot do anything i also requested this uh, stick to hold two stick to hold you know when i practicing walking the price of this uh, uh, pole or stick is only $24 but they charge uh, $400 and again I complain and again nobody care and uh, one thing also that I request from WCB at that time I I requested a power chair but I was denied because they said um, I I must have a heated garage so they denied my request for a power chair for me to go outside have some sunshine stay healthy that's all my purpose that they denied they said I must have to provide a heated garage in order for them to approve my my request for power chair and after three years uh, i was kicked out from my apartment so i have no choice i have to move and my friend offered me to stay one of their room and they have the garage so this again i requested again to wcb to provide me a power chair after three years and yeah they i was so thankful that they finally accepted my request they provide the the power chair and this is one of the things that uh, i complain again like they are requiring me to provide a heated garage and now they are provide wcb provided me an old and so defective power chair so i just don't understand guys why are these people doing this to people like me like it's just the the tires are has some cracks on it for for both of it like i i've used it and then flat and then I asked them to re to replay to to fix the flat tires and then I use again I get flat again so this is their tactics guys they will give you a recycled or garbage thing so you have to come back again and again to them to get more money from you and this really added my stress and you know like i just don't understand and wcb also complaining why are you keep coming back to the shop like asking to fix your power chair i paid four thousand dollars for that power chair can you can you imagine how how can you feel if you are in my situation that uh, they charge me with this recycled power chair very defective won't hold charge the battery won't hold charge with the with this stars crack and yeah and this are this work these are the this these people are working this way to the people who are actually needing uh, their help like and they're charging me four thousand for that recycled uh, power chair and this is one of the complaint why are you guys doing this can i request for a reliable power chair and yeah it's been five years now i i was still denied with my request and i'm still fighting for it because these people are really good of helping themselves but to me as an injured worker that's supposed to be needing this type of help reliable equipment i am like the source of income from these people and really nobody care i i asked my lawyer to help me on this and just i don't know i just don't understand that all these 
things happening in my life here and also if you watch my other videos like my WCB are, are providing fake reports things like that like when I I have they schedule me for an appointment and when I when I when I was there uh, they check my blood pressure it's really high one 160 they said we cannot proceed the, the assessment so it was cancelled and then when I request my files the report is I can jump I can run I can hop I it's like I am a superpower man like I am a, like a superman things like that there is no issues about me that was the report and doctors making some reports that is I'm just making things like and they said that uh, um, I am just I am I'm just pretending things like that can you imagine a life like that in my situation and this is one of the things that you have to be aware when you get injured here you must know or you must ask help from people who can help you real people who can help you because even lawyer here I don't know maybe some other lawyer but yeah like I don't know guys uh, they cut a lot of my benefits I supposed to be getting 6700 per month but now they're just giving me 3000 per month so I am paying mortgage I'm paying everything and they're expecting me to provide my own equipment to when I request they, they always denied they always said that uh, yeah, there is no reason like my their only point that uh, the reason they will not replace the power chair because the old power chair is not enough reason to to support my claim can you imagine that what kind of people is this like they provided me this uh, midwell type uh, power chair there is a small tire at front there is a, there is a small tire um, and the back so during winter I always get stuck because they are like anchored to me these small wheels front and back are the one holding me to to move so this is one of the reason that I requested I, re I need a reliable power chair aside from uh, battery won't hold charge aside from it is really unreliable power chair they provided to me so yeah like I don't know I really don't know what to do I keep asking my lawyer to help me on this they said they are they are trying to help me and yeah like these are the things that you have to be aware when you get injured here you are alone here you are like a source of income from these people like I have also therapy they send me to another town that's one of my question why are they sending me to another town that I have to travel two hours in the back of the van with shaking a lot adding so much pain to me well I have uh, therapist just two blocks away from my house can you imagine that why are these people doing this like this you are just a source of income guys they don't care about you so you have to be aware of this so make sure someone can help you or know how how to survive because you are by yourself to me I when they declared me uh, that I was a dead person like that's one of the issue that I experienced that they're asking me to start working and uh, when I check my files I found out that they declare me as a dead person 
So what I did first is I I applied the uh, I, I I called the labor office and they, their response they're not doing anything wrong they just make a mistake so yeah like I don't know like I don't know really like what happened to this country so and next is um, next things that I did uh, I applied employment uh, EI uh, in, in employment insurance because I was thinking that maybe employers are like using me to claim something why are they declaring me dead person so I applied EI at least the system will dug out my files that I am still alive that I am still breathing because these people are scary really why are these people doing this to other people they declared me dead and that's one of the things that uh, I I struggled so much what how can I survive that it feels like yeah the whole world's like dumping me with everything all the the problems to me I am hurting everything and these people are treating me like this and yeah if you work to this industry oil field industry you have to be careful uh, remember all the the things that i mentioned to you these are intentional accident guys this is not the normal things the work itself is very dangerous but people you work with is more dangerous so you have to be careful and you have to be safe and yeah this is the things that i can share to you and thank you very much for listening my experiences here and yeah thank you so much bye bye